The policy-based authorization framework in ASP.NET Core lets you define richer and more flexible rules for controlling access than simple role checks. In this video, let's break down the building blocks of policy-based authorization framework and put together a simple example to understand how everything fits together. I will be using Amazon Cognito as my identity provider. However, this approach works the same with any identity provider. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel where I talk about .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is part of my ASP.NET Core series and thanks to AWS for sponsoring it. The three fundamental building blocks of policy-based authorization framework are policy, requirement and requirement handler. A policy is a named set of rules that determines whether a user can access a resource or not. This basically fits into the what you're trying to enforce. A requirement is a single rule or condition within a policy. It is the criteria that must be satisfied for the access to be allowed. And finally, the requirement handler is the logic that evaluates whether a requirement is met or not. This is basically the how the policy decides if an access should be granted or not. Now, translating this to ASP.NET Core, the admin-only requirement, which can be a requirement, is represented by an I authorization requirement. So, this is a simple marker interface. Now, for specifying the handler for this specific requirement is using the I authorization handler. So, you can have an admin-only requirement handler that implements this interface. Now, a policy is simply a collection of all these requirements. So on a use case, you can have an admin only requirement, a minimum age, and also say that you need to have a premium subscription. Now, these can be combined in different forms, whether it's your and condition or using or condition. But in this video, we will just focus on how these building blocks are used and how they fit together. So let's switch over to Rider, where we have an existing solution that we've been using with the Cognito series. Now here we have a simple ASP.NET Core API application which has the program.cs where we set up the Cognito Identity Provider. Now if you're completely new to Identity Provider and setting it up in ASP.NET Core, I highly recommend checking out this video series which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Now here you can see we already added a policy as admin only which has two policy requirements added. So you can see we have required authenticated user and also we had added the require claim. Now we did set up the identity provider with two users which had the admin claim and which also did not have that. Now the claim in identity provider for Cognito is just coming as part of Cognito groups which is exactly what we are checking in this case. Now if it is a different identity provider that you are using it will behave exactly the same. However the claim property names might be different. Once we defined this policy, we did enforce it on an endpoint. So you can see on the post endpoint, we have the authorize and we specified the policy to be admin only. In this case, this will be using the policy we just saw that we have defined. But how does all these fit together? What does setting up the policy mean? And what does adding all these require authenticated user and require claim do under the hood? Let's see this in detail. Now to break this down into the three core fundamental blocks that we saw, let's comment out these two lines that we have added within the policy. So this gives us the basic fundamental block number one, which is the policy. So we have defined an admin only policy, which is the container for the requirements that we were talking about. Now we need to define the requirement, which is the next building block. So let's scroll down and create a new requirement class. Let's create a new class, public class admin only requirement. Now we also need to implement the I authorization requirement, which is simply a marker interface. A marker interface is one which has no methods or anything defined inside it, but is simply used as a mark to identify a class that is of this specific type. So we have the admin only requirement defined. So now let's define the last piece of the puzzle, which is the authorization handler. So let's define another class. So let's call that as public class admin only requirement handler. So let's specify 
admin only requirement handler and this is already giving us the default implementation which is github copilot doing this for us so let's use tab and let's walk through the code now in this case we are inheriting from a base class which is authorization handler so if we navigate further into it you can see this is implementing the interface i authorization handler which we saw earlier and in this specific case we have also typed it to a specific requirement type which is why this is taking it in as a generic type and you can see the t requirement should be of type i authorization requirement which is what our admin only requirement is now the handle async is where we have to implement our logic on what it means to meet this specific requirement that we are implementing for so if we navigate back in this case this is implementing for the admin only requirement so what this means is that it should have the cognito colon groups proclaim property on the user's list of claims and this value should match to be that of admin now if that is passed we specify this specific handle requirement as succeeded if this has not passed it simply lets it go which means this specific handler does not succeed that requirement now that doesn't mean that this requirement has completely failed because you can have multiple handlers for the same requirement now in this video we will simply stick with the basic scenarios and in a future video we will explore more complex scenarios of having multiple handlers and multiple requirements within a policy so for the scope of this video let's simply mark this as succeeded only if this is passed and has the admin as the value now with both these defined we can go and use the admin only requirement inside our policy now a policy is nothing but a collection of requirements so in this case we can specify policy dot requirements and add in the new requirement so we can use the add method and specify new admin only requirement so now this requirement is added into this policy now we need to make sure that the handler for this requirement is injected into the dependency injection container so that it can pick it up and process this when this requirement needs to be evaluated for that we can use the builder.services dot add singleton method in this case since there is nothing about the state in the handler we can use the add singleton and let's specify this is the i authorization handler we need to register the admin only requirement handler as that interface type now with all that set up let's put a breakpoint inside our requirement handler and let's try running this code we have the asp.net core api application running so let's minimize this let's also put a breakpoint inside a post method now we use the dot http file to invoke this http request so let's use that again and we need an access token now i have already gone and grabbed the access token using postman like in our previous videos so we have an admin token and also a normal token now the difference between the admin token and the normal token is that in the admin token if we navigate to jwt.io you can see this will contain the group attribute from cognito so this is exactly what we are checking to see if this is an admin so let's use that token in our request so let's navigate back to our http file and let's replace this token now let's make a request so let's hit the post endpoint now this is going to hit the authorization requirement which then accesses the admin only requirement handler and invokes that now you can see we have the context.user so if we expand this and look at the claims this will have the group claim so which means this check will succeed and it will mark this as succeeded now since we only have one requirement inside our policy this policy itself is succeeded and it hits the endpoint let go of this and you can see this is successfully logged now if i was to switch with the other token so let's copy the normal token which does not have the cognito group so if we see here you can see this does not have the admin groups in here now if we were to use this token to hit the api endpoint so let's navigate back to http let's replace this token and let's hit this endpoint again now in this case the requirement handler is again being hit however this time we don't have the group under the claims so you can see there is no group property which means this is going to not succeed so this simply returns a task completed and there is no handler that marks this as succeeded because of which the request fails and we get a 403 forbidden this is how the core fundamental building blocks of the asp.net core authorization
prioritization framework pitched together. So what was happening before when we using the other properties from the policy? So let's uncomment this again and let's navigate into the require claim function and you can see this is calling on a require claim function again which is creating a requirement in itself. So you can see this is adding a claims authorization requirement and it's passing in the parameters. So if we further navigate into that requirement, you can see this one also implements the I authorization requirement. And in this specific case, the same requirement class is also implementing the authorization handler. Now, one advantage of doing this is that the logic remains together and also you don't have to explicitly register this into your DI container, which is why we didn't have to register anything when we used the require claim. Now, in the authorization handler, we have the handle requirements async and all this is doing is navigating through all the user's claims and checking if they have a claim type which matches that of our name and the value that we have passed. So, we have specified two parameters in this case. We have specified the required claim. The claim type is Cognito Groups and the value that's allowed is admin. Now, similarly, if we were to look at the authenticated user method, you can navigate into that. This again is adding a requirement and it's denying anonymous authorization requirements. So if we navigate into that, this is a deny anonymous authorization requirement, which again follows the same pattern of having the authorization requirement and the handler in the same class. So in this case, the handle requirement makes sure that the user is logged in and is not anonymous. Now, this calls the succeed only if the user user is not anonymous, which means for this to pass, a logged in user and the user should be there in the context. So if you want to avoid this registration, you can very well go and specify the admin only requirement handler and merge this into our admin only requirement. So all you need to do is move this base class in here and move this method into this requirement class, which means it will all stay together. When we call the builder.services.add authorization, we are injecting in the default services that is required to bind all these policies, requirements, and requirement handlers together. So inside this call, you can see we have the add authorization core, which further registers all the classes that's required to bind these building blocks together. So the default authorization service, which implements the I authorization service, is what navigates through these policies, requirements, and handlers, and make sure that everything is evaluated and run at runtime when a user hits the endpoint. Now, you can also override these default providers and write your custom providers for advanced use cases. However, for majority of the time, you can be sticking with the default and just have a combination of different policies, requirements, and requirement handlers to handle your authorization requirements. Now, what we've seen is a very simple example and in real world, the policies and the authorization requests that you need to implement are not that simple. You often need to club multiple requirements and handlers together to cater for the different complex scenarios. We will be exploring this in a future video where we'll be looking at multiple policies, each policy is having multiple requirements and also a requirement that can have multiple handlers. If you want to be notified when that video comes out, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.